With lumber prices still out of control, people are being forced to put their hobbies and projects on hold. For those that don't want to do that, I've got some awesome tips on how you can score lumber without breaking the bank. So stick around and I'll tell you all about it. Who just gives away wood? While lumber prices seem to be easing a bit, I think that they'll stay pretty high for at least the rest of this year. And this has made it really tough for some people who are on a budget, but also want to fix things and build things. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you some tips on how to get the wood that you need for your next project without spending a ton of money. As I get going here, please be sure to add a comment and share all the ways that you've been able to find good lumber for your next project. First, let me tell you about the absolute worst place to buy wood, and that is your local big box hardware store. The one benefit they offer is convenience, but they lose on just about everything else, including price, uh, quality, and selection. Just a step above that would be a lumber yard. These places generally carry construction lumber and usually only sell in high quantities. And so unless you're looking for enough wood to build a big project or an entire house, then you're a bit out of luck. The quality tends to be better, but again, they do expect volume. And so if you are buying small amounts, you may not even be able to shop there. The next is a specialty lumber store. Now these stores cater to cabinet makers, furniture makers, and hobby woodworkers, and usually have a good selection of hardwoods and softwoods, and sometimes even imported exotic woods. The benefit of one of these places is that the quality of the wood tends to be very high and the staff tends to be very knowledgeable, but the downside is price. But as the old adage says, you get what you pay for. I also lump into this category online wood sellers. Um, I personally have never purchased wood online and I suppose that it would be fine for small things like turning blanks, but I can't imagine that it would be economical for big furniture projects. But if you've had some good experiences with buying wood online, leave me a comment, tell me about it. I'd love to hear about your experience. The next place to find wood is from wood pallets. Woodworkers have been using pallets for ages, mainly because they're everywhere, and I mean everywhere. The main positive of using wood pallets is that they're generally free and can sometimes have interesting species of wood. There are a lot of negatives though to using wood pallets, including the time and effort it takes to pull them apart, the size and thickness of the boards, uh, the quality of the wood, um, chemically treated pallets, and more. I'm not gonna go into all the negatives of wood pallets because I made a whole video on that, and so check that out here if you're interested. I'll also leave a link in the description. Key though is to avoid pallets that are too dirty, too beat up, or too weather damaged. Also avoid blue or red pallets or pallets that have been treated with methyl bromide. The best pallets to use are the large ones that have only been used once. And you can find these types of pallets at large equipment sellers like ATV dealerships. Look them up, give them a call. They usually have tons of pallets that they're trying to get rid of. Now with all those more common places out of the way, uh, let me talk about you know, some of the absolute best places in my view to find good lumber. The first place is local sawmills. Now, when I lived in Pennsylvania, I visited a bunch of these small uh, local sawmills and it was always interesting to see their setup, see the logs and, and watch them turn them into boards. The benefit of going to one of these places is because you're, you're cutting out the middleman. And so the lumber is usually much, much cheaper than you'd find at one of these other stores. Um, they often also dry the lumber themselves. And in, in every instance I've ever had, they're very generous with their measurements. The downside though of a place like this is that they tend to be out in the country and they'll generally only have local species. Um, also in many parts of the country, local mills may be hard to find. Now somewhat related, um, but people that I would put in an entirely separate category are the local hobby sawyers. Over the past 10 years, there's been an explosion of people who are buying their own sawmills and milling up their own boards. And I've purchased wood from these folks before. The benefit here again is price. You can't beat it. That said though, the quality can be hit and miss. If you find somebody who has less experience or someone who has a mill that's a bit harder to operate, you might find that the lumber is sometimes sawn to inconsistent thicknesses or it isn't stored or dried correctly. And that can lead to a lot of warping that could normally be prevented. Now to be clear, that's not always the case and these local hobby sawyers can sometimes be very, very skilled and have really fantastic quality lumber. 
Um, but the other major downside though of going with one of these local hobby sawyers is that they generally only sell green lumber, which means that it was recently cut and hasn't been dried and may not be suitable for most projects until it is dried. It's still something you can work around, but it may require some additional effort. Uh, next is I think one of the best places to get lumber and where I've gotten a ton of lumber in the past, and that is from local classified ads. Now there used to be tons of local classifieds and, and things like Craigslist, but now nearly everything is on Facebook Marketplace. Um, it's very common to find an old woodworker who's getting rid of a ton of lumber or someone who's moving and needs to downsize. The benefit here is that you can find lumber for very, very cheap, and many times it can be very high quality. The downside though, is that you can't always be picky and choosy and may sometimes have to take everything that they've got, um, even if there's only a few pieces that you may want. But again, you can find awesome deals. Now, one other downside of buying lumber uh, locally in that way is that um, the people selling the lumber may not always be the people that owned it or bought it. And so they may not know anything about it. They may not know how much it's worth. They may not know the, 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 the species or anything like that. But the challenge is you have to keep an eye on the quality and for other things like insect damage that can really cause some problems for you. I have a whole story about some lumber that I bought that had some powder post uh, beetle damage. I'm going to make a video on that uh, in the future here, so be sure to subscribe. But it's not something you necessarily want to deal with. And if, if you do see it, uh, you need to know how to deal with it. So stay tuned for that one. Now, the last tip is, is really a huge category, and that is to seek out salvage lumber. Now, this is the act of repurposing lumber or saving lumber that was destined for the garbage heap. Now, when I remodeled my kitchen in my last house, I was removing some bulkheads and found that the builder had used two by 12 pine boards to build the bulkheads. Uh, it was bone dry and it was perfectly good lumber, so I tore it out, cut them up, and made these drawers, among other things. Um, I still have a piece in my garage that I'm saving for just the perfect project. And so using old lumber like that is a great way to repurpose and reuse what you find. Um, other places like old sheds, uh, barns, old fences, um, other wooden things, old furniture, um, they're plentiful and if the wood is in good shape it can be used for all sorts of projects. Another place to salvage wood from is construction sites. They use so much wood and they tend to waste a lot. Part of the reason for that is that the guys actually doing the work are not the ones paying for the wood. And so they don't always make an effort to conserve it, right? But make sure that you have permission because taking something like that from a construction site without permission is theft. Now I live in a new area now and I see, again, heaps of lumber that are just thrown into dumpsters. And it's really kind of uh, upsetting to see, especially now when lumber is so expensive. So talk to them. If they're throwing it out, they're gonna be happy to let you have some of it. Another great place to get quality wood is from local cabinet shops. They often build out of high quality hardwood and have tons of scraps left over from building cabinets or from filler strips or, or things like that. And, and they just throw it out. Again, be sure to ask permission before you go dumpster diving, but if there's something that they're throwing out, they're generally not opposed to giving away the scraps. Now, you can't expect large pieces, um, but you can expect to get sometimes good hardwood, maybe walnut, maybe maple, um, things you might be able to build a, you know, a cutting board out of. Um, those scraps can really be useful and places like that are great places to find free wood. Now there's a ton of other places you can salvage lumber from. I often see ads for church pews. Um, depending on how they're made, there can be a ton of lumber, great lumber on a church pew. The rails and styles from old doors can also have a lot of lumber and it's usually pretty thick and, and that can be repurposed. Old pianos are often made of good lumber and can be salvaged. Now, to be clear though, uh, tearing apart a working piano feels like a crime. Uh, it reminds me a lot of that uh, one part in that one movie. I would soon destroy a stained glass window as an artist like yourself. <clears throat> Please understand, I hold you in the highest respect. But if you do come across a piano that's destined for the dump, salvage it. Rather than just throw out all that good wood, salvage it. Just be aware that many newer pianos uh, are made from plywood in some cases with a veneer and may not be all that useful, but many uh, other pianos are made out of high quality hardwoods that could be repurposed uh, for many different things. You know, there's, there's a thousand other places you could get uh, lumber from, old bowling alleys have, uh, they use a lot of pine and maple. So hardwood floors that people are pulling out and getting rid of. You could build a table out of something like that. Um, so there's a lot of other places where you can get wood from. 
Now these are a lot of different ideas, a lot of different places that you could get lumber from that you could find for very cheap or in many cases free. Um, but it does take work. It takes work maybe to plane them down, maybe to remove some finish, or, or maybe to you know, put a bunch of tiny pieces together. I mean, it's gonna take some work. And, and in general, where you get your wood from really depends upon what you're trying to build. You know, it's hard to build a large table out of cabinet shop scraps, but if you're making a cutting board, they work great. Um, if you're trying to build an addition to your house, pallets aren't gonna work for you. Uh, and construction from a lumber yard may be your only choice. Again, in general, it helps to be able to identify different species of wood and to be aware of what those uh, different types of woods could be used for and also what a fair price would be. If you're flexible and you keep your eye out, you'll definitely be able to find what you need for a reasonable price and sometimes even free. So I hope you find these tips useful and that you can get the lumber that you need for your next project. If you have any other great stories about great lumber deals that you scored in the past, or if you have any other ideas of something that I didn't mention here, be sure to share it with us in the comments. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Uh, be sure to give me a thumbs up, be sure to like my channel, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.